Here's the image that we're going to retouch today. Too many times I see senior photographers take an image, burn it on a disc, and give it to the kid. I think we really want to separate ourselves from photographers that do that. And one way to do that is by really enhancing the image. Not to make it look fake, but to make it look like a piece of art that the senior could hang on their wall. A lot of the techniques I'm going to show you today are super easy to do, and maybe you already know them all, maybe you don't know any of them. Take little bits and pieces and apply it to your own work. The first thing I like to do in Camera Raw is just to take a look at the image. Now this girl has flawless skin. I absolutely love her red hair. Not only is it red, it's curly. And she wore a blue sweater, which is the perfect complement to the red hair. It really gives the color a nice balance and contrast. But we're going to fix this up a little bit and see what we can do. Obviously the image is too warm, so I'm going to turn the temperature down. And I'm only looking at her skin at this point. I only want the adjustments we do here to make her skin look really good. Let's bump up the contrast. I might try bumping the exposure a little bit. Let's turn down the whites. And still it looks a little too warm for me, so I'm just gonna bring the temperature down a little bit more. And that looks nice. Once I have the image corrected and looking normal, so to speak, then we can go in and play with the colors and adjustments and make this a wow image. Next thing I'm gonna do is come down to calibration and with the hue slider, since she's wearing that blue sweater, I'm gonna slide the hue slider more towards teal and look what it did to her hair. So here's before and here's after. We've really brought out the color in her hair and given a nice, warm, rich blue to her sweater. The red in her skin, however, is a little too red, so I'm gonna push the hue of the reds more towards orange, and I'm gonna desaturate the reds just a little bit. Now look what we've already done to the image in Camera Raw. Here's before, and here's after before, which already kind of looked like a good image, and we've already made it 100% better. Let's open our image in Photoshop and begin the retouch. What are the things you want to bring out in this image? Obviously, I want to feature this girl's hair because her hair is sort of her trademark. It's what she's known for. Her freckles are the same. She's known for having freckles and those big blue eyes that pierce right through the camera. We want to enhance those so that the image really stands out. Let's start with her eyes. So I'm going to zoom in to 100% and first thing I'm going to do is give a little more contrast to her eyes. So I'm going to duplicate our layer, set the blending mode to overlay, then I'm going to hold down Alt or Option and click the Layer Mask button. Now with a soft white brush, I'm going to paint over her iris just to give it a little more contrast. And if it's too much, we can turn it back a little bit. It's important that you zoom in and look at what you're doing and also zoom out and look at what you're doing. Because sometimes when you zoom out, the effect is far too strong. We want to be really subtle in everything that we do. And I think that looks nice. Now, I also like to brighten the inside corner that's opposite of the catch light. In this case, you can actually see my reflection in her eye, and you can see that I was using an Octabox to light the image. The lighting setup was really simple. I just had her sit on a step and put her arms up like that and just added a little bit of fill light with the Octabox to evenly light her face. Now let's take a look at her eye whites. I'm gonna go ahead and flatten the image and then duplicate it again by holding Command J. Go to Filter and Blur, and for the eye whites, we're gonna do Surface Blur. And I'm gonna turn the radius just to the point where we don't see the veins in the eye. And you can experiment with the threshold a little bit just till we get those veins out of there. 
Surface Blur allows you to blur the image without smearing the colors, so the colors stay in place. I'm going to hold down Option or Alt and click the Layer Mask icon. And again, with a small white brush, I'm going to paint over the, the veins in her eyes. That looks pretty good. Now, everybody has veins in their eyes, so we don't want to completely destroy them. We just want to fade them a little bit. So turn the opacity down on that layer. Next, let's brighten the inner corner of the iris a little bit. So I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer and turn the curve up so that it's brighter. Then I'm going to invert the layer mask by holding Command or Control I. Again, with a small white brush, I'm going to paint the inside corner of the eye just to add light in the opposite side of the catch light. Obviously, that's too strong. Turn the opacity down. I'm going to zoom in and out. Let's turn it on and off so we can see the difference that it's made. Still a little too much. Let's turn it down to about 50%, and I think that looks pretty good. Let's make a new blank layer. Now we're going to sharpen the eyes a little bit. In recent versions of Photoshop, the sharpen tool has been greatly improved. So at about 30% strength, and make sure you have sample all layers selected, I'm just going to dab a few times on each eye to make it a little bit sharper. The sharpen tool used to be terrible, but it has since improved greatly. I'm going to flatten my image. Now let's darken her eyelashes a little bit. Let's make a new curves adjustment layer. And I'm not even going to do anything with the curve. What I'm going to do is under blending mode, select multiply. When you select any adjustment layer and set it to multiply without even doing anything, it makes the image darker. Now I'm going to double click on my image and set our blending options. We want this to apply to only the darkest parts of our image. So I'm going to slide the right triangles to the left, then hold down Option and separate this right triangle. Now our Curves Multiply layer is only being applied to the darkest parts of our image. So let's invert the layer mask by hitting Command or Control I. Now with yet another soft white brush, let's paint over her eyelashes. And it just darkens them up a little bit. We can turn the opacity down if it's too much. Let's back out and take a look. Let's turn it down just a little bit more. And that looks good. There is one little skin flaw. Let's just use the stamp tool and we will make sure we don't see that freckle repeat. Here's one little blemish right there. I'm just going to use the stamp tool and get rid of that. Now let's enhance our freckles just a little bit. Let's select a new black and white adjustment layer and let's set its blending mode to luminosity. Now with the yellow slider, I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Also turn down the red slider. On the layer mask, hit Command or Control I. And with a soft white brush, going to paint over the freckles. Now, obviously, this is too much right now, but we're going to back off here in a second. There we go. Let's try a different blending mode and see if we get a little bit better result. For example, Oh, I think soft light looks much better and it gives a lot more contrast to the skin and the face. Let's turn the opacity down. So here's before and after. Just a little bit of pop, nothing too much. I'm going to flatten our image. Let's look for any stray hairs with the spot healing brush. I might take out just a couple hairs right here. Since she has curly hair, I think the strays up there look totally normal so we're going to leave most of them let's fix this little hair and dot on the sweater and there we go we're looking pretty good 
Now, I always think it's fun to go back to the beginning and see where we started. So that was before any retouching, and this is after. So far, our image is coming into shape. I think it looks really nice. The feature of our image is obviously her face, her eyes, her hair. Everything else needs to be a little bit darker. So let's add a new curves adjustment layer and let's turn this way down. And I'm gonna grab the darkest point and bring it up a little bit. Now, if you're new to curves or don't understand how curves work, I have a great video that explains curves for beginners and I'll link it up in the corner of this video. You can click on it and then watch it later. Now with that layer mask selected with a black brush, I am going to turn the flow down to about 10%. And I'm just gonna color on her face and a little bit of the sweater because we don't want that part darkened. We just want the edges darkened. Maybe try darkening it just a little bit more. And that looks really nice. Next, let's add some highlights and lowlights to her hair. Let's make a new curves adjustment layer. And instead of doing anything with the curve, I'm just gonna set its blending mode to screen. Now I only want this to brighten the bright parts of our image. So I'm gonna double click the layer. I'm gonna slide this dark slider and I'm only watching her hair right now. I'm keeping an eye on what is being selected. I'm gonna hold down alter option and split that little triangle so that we get a nice smooth transition. Press OK. Gonna hit Command I and invert the layer mask. Now with a soft white brush, with the flow set around 20%, I'm just gonna color on her hair in areas that are brighter than others. This is gonna add a little bit of a highlight to her hair. We're just exaggerating what's already there. That looks nice. Let's take a look at before and after. It just adds a little bit of dimension to her hair. Now we can also do the same thing with the low lights. Let's add another curves adjustment layer. And what's the blending mode that darkens? Multiply. Let's double click on our curves layer. Now we only want this to appear in the darkest parts of our image. So we're gonna take the right slider, bring it to the left, and then hold down option and split the slider. Now we'll invert our layer mask by pressing Command or Control I. Then with that same white brush in the darker areas of her hair, I'm just gonna paint a few strokes. Again, we're just enhancing what's already there. We're not painting new parts of her hair. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Pretty good. Let's turn the opacity down on the shadows. Let's turn the opacity down on the highlights. Now, if I hold down option and click the eyeball on the background layer, I can see the before and after. Now, if we're happy with that, we can flatten our image. And then our final step is gonna be adding a little bit of wow factor to the image. So if I go to window and I'm gonna bring down my libraries and here are some light overlays that I made uh, that you can download for free. I'll put the download link and the little card in the description where you can learn how to use light overlays. But since there's a lot of blue and orange in this, I'm going to use this blue and orange light overlay. And I wanna flip it so that it is facing the other direction. Now I will just stretch it until it covers our image. Now let's change our blending mode to screen. Turn the opacity down. Now I'm gonna make a layer mask and with a black brush, I'm gonna mask this off her face because we don't want that lighting effect on her face. That looks good. Let's make one more curves adjustment layer and just darken the outer edges. Now with a black brush, let's mask this off her face. And there's our finished image. I think that looks so much better than the original. This is something that a senior would hang on their wall and be proud of. 
it looks so much better than just an unedited JPEG thrown on a CD given to a senior to print. This is more of a wall art item that I think would really boost your sales. Guys, hopefully I presented some tips that you can take away and use in your own work. If you did, do me a huge favor, subscribe to the channel, give me a like, and we will see you in the next video. Have a great day, everyone.